Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Synod Evening Prayers on this Monday, the 29th of August. Our opening music was the um, hymn, My Faith It Is, an Oaken Staff. Our opening praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because you are at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And then our Monday evening psalm is taken from Psalm 103. All that I am, praise the Lord. Everything that is in me, praise his holy name. My whole being, praise the Lord. Do not forget all his kindness. The Lord forgives me all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He saves my life from the grave. He loads me with love and mercy. He satisfies me with good things. He makes me young again, like the eagle. He has not punished us as our sins should be punished. He has not repaid us evil that we have done. As high as the skies above the earth, so great is the love for those who respect him. He has taken our sins away from us, as far as the east is from the west. The Lord have mercy on those who fear him, as a father has mercy on his children. He knows how we are made, and he remembers that we are dust. Everything the Lord has made should praise him in all the places that he rules. My whole being, praise the Lord. Amen. So our first reading this evening um, comes from the Old Testament and from uh, the book of Job. And we're reading from um, chapter 12, verses 1 to 6, and then jumping to, chap uh, to verses 13 to 25. Then Job answered them, I'm sure you think you are the only wise people left. You think that when you die, wisdom will be gone with you. But my mind is as good as yours. You aren't any smarter than I am. You haven't said anything that people don't already know. My friends laugh at me now, they say. He prayed to God and got his answer. I am a good, innocent man, but still they laugh at me. Those who have no troubles make fun of those who do. They hit a man when he's down. But robbers' tents are not bothered. Those who make God angry live in peace, even though God has them in his power. But wisdom and power belong to God. Good advice and understanding are his. Anything God tears down cannot be rebuilt. Anyone he puts in prison cannot be set free. If he holds back the rain, the earth will dry up. If he lets the rain loose, it will flood the land. God is strong and always wins. He controls those who fool others and those who are fooled. He strips advisers of their wisdom and makes leaders act like fools. He strips kings of their authority and makes them slaves. He strips priests of their power and removes those who feel so secure in their position. He makes trusted advisers be silent. He takes away the wisdom of the older leaders. He brings disgrace on important people and he takes power away from rulers. He exposes even the darkest secrets. He sends light into the places that are as dark as death. God makes nations great and then he destroys them. He makes nations grow large and then he scatters the people. He makes their leaders foolish. He makes them wander around in the desert. They're like someone feeling in the dark. They're like drunks who don't know where they are going. 
And then our gospel reading is from John 8, 21 to 32. Again, Jesus said to the people, I will leave you and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. So the Jewish leaders asked themselves, will he kill himself? Is that why he said, you cannot come where I am going? But Jesus said to them, you people are from here below, but I am from above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. Yes, if you don't believe that, I am. You will die in your sins. They asked, then who are you? Jesus answered, I am what I have told you from the beginning. I have much more I could say to judge you, but I tell people only what I've heard from the one who sent me, and he speaks the truth. They did not understand who he was talking about. He was telling them about the Father. So he said to them, You will lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am. <coughs> you will know that whatever I do is not by my own authority. You will know that I say only what the Father has taught me. The one who has sent me is in me, is with me. <coughs> I always do what pleases him, so he has not left me alone. While he was saying these things, people believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue to accept and obey my teaching, you are really my followers. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. <coughs> so then, to um, the continuation of our um, book of Job. And in the reading, um, this evening's reading, it's, here, it's easy, isn't it, to hear the sarcasm and the bitter tone in the voice of Job. <coughs> and I think that the tone is appropriate because Job's friends really had acted as if they were the only people that had all the wisdom. He revokes um, Zophar and his friends and as he does so he makes two points. And the first is that Job himself, he is a man of understanding. And secondly, actually the theological principles that they're presenting are already widely known by others. <coughs> and Job goes on to complain that even though he was a godly man, one who called on God and God answered, a man who was just and blameless, even so he was mocked and ridiculed. And in the way that the innocent Job is mocked helps us perhaps to fast forward to the cross and reminds us of how Jesus, when he suffered on the cross, was mocked by the soldiers who beat him, was mocked by the chief priests as he hung on the cross and was widely ridiculed by others, even one of um, the um, prisoners that died beside him. And so Job, if you like, is a foretaste of what will come in our Lord. Job goes on to remember what his life used to be like. He calls, he used to call on God and he used to receive an answer. In those bright days, his life was just easy. He was at ease. But now it's all different. His friends only mock and misunderstand him. Now it seemed to Job that his life and prior understanding was upside down. Before, everything seemed to make sense. The righteous seemed to be blessed and the wicked seemed to be punished or afflicted. Now it was all different. Job, however, doesn't give up on God. He doesn't say, oh, well, because this wickedness, uh, sorry, this suffering has come, then there can be no God. No, instead, he gives up his prior understanding of God, but not on God himself. 
And perhaps there's a lesson for us to learn as through suffering and trial, our faith matures. In verse 13 onwards, Job rebukes the previous speech um, from chapter 11, especially where his friend Zophar criticised Job for not knowing God and likened him to an empty-headed man. Here Job showed that he did indeed know God. He knew all about God. He knew about God's wisdom and his strength. He knew about his, his, how he was mighty in counsel and understanding. And Job's message to his friends is clear. I do know God. I do know how great he is. Don't criticise me any longer on that point. And then with this poetic beauty and repetition, Job goes on to describe that power and majesty of God. Job affirms that no leader has any real wisdom apart from God. No research or report can outweigh God's opinion. No scientific discovery or medicine advancement can take him by surprise because God is Lord of all. And I suppose perhaps what we could learn from this tonight is that when we look for guidance for our own decisions, we too need to recognise that God's wisdom is superior to anything that the world can ever offer. And perhaps also that we mustn't let earthly advisers dampen our desire to know God better. Amen. So our New Testament song is Matthew 5, 3 to 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, or falsely say all evil kinds of things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for it is in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were there before you. Amen. And our song this evening is To Be in Your Presence. Amen. 
<clears throat> and so to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray for all the nations that the liberty of the gospel may be the foundation of every government. At this time we pray especially for those caught up in conflicts, wherever that may be, where they're forced to flee or fight or are suffering the loss of loved ones. God of peace and justice, we pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit may comfort them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, that they would make wisdom and wise decisions and com with compassion um, that they would guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for your precious children, those that are at risk, those who are in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own congregations, that our lives may be rooted in the love of Christ. And as we think of the East Midland Synod, we think and pray tonight for the ministers and the elders and the members of our own churches in Derbyshire. Where there is darkness, let them bring light to the glory of your name. God in heaven, may your Holy Spirit, the Comforter who proceeds from you, enlighten our minds lead us into all truth and make us active in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all those who are imprisoned by chains of suffering, that Lord you would set them free. We continue to pray for all those facing the challenge of COVID-19, all those with ailments of every kind, including, including people who are living with chronic pain and long-term conditions. For senior citizens and everyone who is vulnerable, and for all those who care for them. And alongside those who suffer physically, we also pray with, for those with mental health who has been badly affected by the challenges they've faced. We pray for those with heavy burdens to carry on their own, unbeknownst to others, and for complex family situations that there may be open dialogue and understanding. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. And Father, as we look around our own country and countries in the world, we pray for all those who are currently struggling with facing rising costs in food and housing and heat and so many other essentials. May your church rate and people of goodwill stand alongside in most those in most need, giving a hand, helping them out. And as the children and students start to return or soon will be returning to school, for them, for the staff, for the teachers, we pray for all those at the start of a new academic year, that they will remain safe and be inspired. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for those who have asked for our prayer at this time. With Liz, we continue to pray for her 12-year-old great-nephew, Ryan, and her daughter, Emma. With Prince, we pray for Cheryl. With Andy, for Mike. With Judith, for Catherine, her niece. For the Reverend Martin Ferris. For the Reverend Brian Russell. For the Reverend Stanley Crane for the Reverend Derek Hopkins, and for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskin. Lord, you know each and every one of these situations and these people who are precious to you. We pray for your healing to be poured out into these situations. And Lord, we lift up to you all those we know who are grieving the passing of loved ones. And especially we continue to pray for Sandy on the death of her husband, Dave. And in a moment of silence now, we lift up to you all those known to us in need of prayer tonight. Lord, we pray for healing and wholeness. 
according to your will. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. O wise God, your compassion and care have nourished us this day and have led us to this night's beginning. Keep the light of your hope burning brightly in your people through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we ask all these things in his name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think on those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Lord God, you have led us through this day. Keep us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening and a night free from sin. And at the end, bring us into everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, we offer you all glory, honour and power and worship, now and for ever. Amen. So then, may the Lord bless us this evening. Amen. So good night and God bless.